thank you guys so much for tuning in and talking to Walk today. I have Obiyama Martin here, a extraordinary mom, woman of God, right author, um, now tra traveler on the cruise. <laughs> um, but just um, awesome, awesome to have you here. Um, I remember when I met you about a month or so ago and I was sharing with you, I, didn't, I know you probably remember because I just called you, but I remember calling you a couple years ago and just hearing about just all the things that you did. And then when they had me in the room with you, I was like, God is just bringing everything full circle. So I wasn't ready then. Mm -hmm. He had to kind of take me through a couple of years of some things and that's fine. But I, just to be able to see that he's, you know, saying like now is the time. It was right. So even though you may not have known it, you were definitely a symbolization of that. So I appreciate that. Thank you. But how are you doing today? I am fabulous. Yeah. I am absolutely fabulous. That's awesome. Yes. That's a great answer because you know people are like, I'm okay. No, I am fabulous. That's good. I am fabulous. Yes, That's awesome. <laughs> I, I, I mean, that's awesome because, you know, we have those, our days and but just every time I see you, always greeted with a smile. So that's beautiful. Oh, thank you. That's beautiful. So we're here. We're going to talk about, I mean, really much the way the Lord gave it to me is really just to allow your journey to be shared, but to allow your, the book to showcase everything in there is you. Mm -hmm. And it came out um, this year and it's called Breathe, but you gave it acronym, so I want to break it down. So B is for belief, R is for release, E is for embrace, A is for acceptance, T is for take action, H is for healing is a journey, and E is for elevate. That's a whole process. That's a whole life story in itself. I love that you put healing is a journey, not killing. Because the healing is a journey. So I want to pretty much just go through each acronym and give a little bit of you and share a little bit about the book. So first we're going to start with B for belief. Um, and I thought it was really, really amazing how you share in the book about how you struggle with believing who you are and believing in the name that God had chose for you. Your mom had went through some things. She um, went through some abuse, physical and emotional, and it enters in rejection because you know that's, that, that's passed down and things of that nature. So you struggle with rejection and rejecting of who you are. Um, how did you share a little bit of the story of really coming into understanding and, and believing in who you are and um, what you would want people to take away and really understand and believe in who God had called them, has called them to be? So <clears throat> here's the thing. Number one, adults need to just stop being cruel and mm -hmm. mean to kids, mm -hmm. period. What I've learned, though, uh, through this journey is that when you are broken on the inside as an adult mm -hmm. and you That's have good. a responsibility to teach children, if you are not healed yes. and you are not whole, all of that nastiness that's on the inside of you comes out mm -hmm. with somebody's baby. Mm -hmm. And you're now judging them and you're labeling them because you're messed mm -hmm. up. And that's what adults did to yeah. me. That's and that's right. what they do every day to children. Mm -hmm. And we got to stop that. I just did a six hour training at a daycare center two weeks ago and it was on social emotional development. Mm -hmm. And I was like, listen, y'all got to get your life. Mm -hmm. Y'all got to get your life because you're going home and you're miserable or you're being abused or you're in a situation mm -hmm. and you're coming to work and you're judging these babies instead of loving mm -hmm. them behind the behavior that we see. We're so quick to say children are bad, but I say it's the adults that bad because children come into this world innocent. Yes, they do. So if they're doing something wrong, they learned it, mm -hmm. right? They had Somebody to learn it, it because yes, right. Somebody, Somebody either it, didn't yeah. do one or two things. They didn't stop it or they didn't correct it. Yeah, so if you don't correct, they didn't correct it, it, then that's you've good. just taught me that my mm -hmm. behavior was okay. So mm -hmm. the next time you see me doing something wrong, don't, don't judge me and say I'm bad. Correct me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's correct good. Correct me. That's good. Right but, in. you know, I think that what the one of the most key things that I heard you say was about correcting. And, you know, we put so much on these kids. These kids are bad. These kids are bad. Okay, I get all that. But somebody taught them this or somebody let because you see people laughing at them. Oh, he, he, ha, ha. Exactly. And they making these videos now and exactly. they and they make these kids the, all, all, all kinds of stuff that adults stuff. is doing. Absolutely. But then you don't understand why your child is out there in jail having sex and doing everything because y'all make it right. fun y'all make it funny for them they right. think this is what they're they supposed to do the, yeah. so i thought that that was key and just like you said like you tell your kids not to do something but then you don't correct it because you got it all around them how are you going to tell them not and then they see you do it so i thought that that was key but we're going to take a quick break i want to actually come back and um talk about the rest of the book okay, okay. we'll be right awesome. back And thank you guys so much for keeping it locked here. We are still here with Oviama Martin and we are talking about her entire life that she put in this book. I don't even think it is enough 
I don't even think there's enough in there. You can tell why when I was reading it there, there was so much more that you wanted to delve into, but God gives us the words to say. So I wanted to talk about the acronyms and I wanted to jump into two now. So release, that's the first one. And then E, which stands for embrace. So that in itself are two different journeys, but you said in release and releasing old wounds and releasing toxic relationships. But then you talk about embracing pretty much where you are and accepting in a sense like things that you know you have to embrace where you are you have you can't change it so share a little bit about releasing because you went through the toxic relationship part unfortunately recently as well and then embracing where you are so share a little bit about um the release part of your um this journey for you as well as embracing where you are now so <clears throat> The, the most important thing, so release is so holistic, like each yeah. word is holistic, right? So for me, the and I say release negative people, places, and things, and toxins, mm -hmm. because we have to be careful about what we allow our ears to hear, yeah. our eyes to see, and our words to speak. We have to be cognizant of the things that we ingest, digest, and the things that we allow to be inserted mm -hmm, mm -hmm. into our bodies, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? And so the release, if you don't get into the habit of releasing daily, you will get clogged up, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, almost. And so, so it's two things, right? You could be spiritually constipated, mm -hmm. right? Or you could be physically constipated because there's no release. Mm -hmm. We know that for our health, we're supposed to release what, the negative mm -hmm. from the foods every day. Well, it's the same thing mm -hmm. in relationships. It's the same thing when you come into a space where it's negative energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't release that, that thing then transferred mm -hmm. on you. Mm -hmm. And you gotta be able to like just shed off because otherwise you will literally take something on and don't even understand mm -hmm. why you feeling this way or all of a sudden why you acting this way or talking this way. And you done had a transference right you know, of somebody's power or spirit or, or whatever. So especially as women, because we are receptors. Mm -hmm. So we have to be extra conscious mm -hmm. where men are depositors. Right, so, right. It, you know, they don't have the same emotional um, attachments mm -hmm. or energy entanglements that we do. So the release is really important. And so I have really come to practice just from a very holistic perspective to make sure like if I if, if I have a conversation with you and we agree to disagree I need to I need to talk about it mm -hmm. and release it and not carry that in right, on right. to tomorrow right mm -hmm. I'm recently um as you so I'm recently divorced mm -hmm. um as of February and but that was a that was a process I, I didn't speak to him while we were going through it for mm -hmm. about six months but i was bitter and angry yep. so i had to really pray and ask god to do surgery mm -hmm. not just heal me like you you need to give me a whole new heart so that i can mm -hmm. have a conversation with him and co-parenting for the benefit of our children right because right. Right? we got five children so i didn't want them to feel what i felt because it wasn't their fault right you know right. Um, and, and so I had to release that. And then I had to embrace this new season yeah, of singleness. Yeah, absolutely. You were married for 18 long, years. Yeah. 18 years. And you That's went a through a lot time. in I that went, relationship. Did. You did. I did. But I, I, in order for me to heal, mm -hmm. I had to forgive. Mm -hmm. I had to forgive me because it wasn't all him. I mean, yes, he had an addiction, right? But as I look back and I was just having this conversation with my dad a couple of days ago about if I had my life to do it over, like if, if, if I had an opportunity to marry him again, I still would say yes. You know why? Yeah, because all of those things that I went through made me who I am That's today. Good. It That's built good. character and it allowed me to have a relationship that I wouldn't have had with, with my heavenly father because that man kept me on my knees. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Like, I mean, and if you don't <laughs> know her story, she had, knees. Um, you know, they were, they did so much together. They had five beautiful children, right. business, but he had an addiction and you knew. 
And like you talked about embracing it and something we have to do is also embrace who somebody just is okay. and just understand it like this is who they are. And as I'm reading, I'm like, she has really gotten to the place where just understanding like this is just who this man this is, is. Just, right. and, 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 and let him and release and you have him. to yeah. accept people when they show you who you are, who they are. And mm -hmm. my my mistake was because everybody in my family was addicted to something. It was familiar right, to me. Right, that's good. So because people were like, why would you marry him and you knew he had? An addiction where everybody in my family had an addiction mm -hmm. so it was familiar it mm -hmm. didn't make it right mm -hmm. but we talking about belief right. so I was believing something that wasn't true I was believing a lie thinking that I could save him yes that's and that, I couldn't yeah, that's save it. him, and I was trying to be the Proverbs 31, and I was trying to be First Peter 2, 3, sanctified wife, <laughs> sanctified, all of that. But you can't sanctify you can't. what that, that, that don't want to be sanctified. That's right. you, you can't Everybody help somebody has a choice. that don't want to be helped. And so I found myself losing myself mm -hmm. trying to save mm -hmm. him. And so it became toxic mm -hmm. because we just argued all the time. That was my last relationship. All the time. And you know what they've gone through and I felt like if I just can, if I do this, then he will and it wouldn't happen that way. And it doesn't make him a bad person because honestly the Lord had told me to let it go but I didn't so God had him let me go. That's how that went because of the fact that I wouldn't listen. And that stemmed from the fact of me feeling like I couldn't save my father. My father is an addict. My father's in jail for, you know, for murder, life with no parole but my father was on and off drugs my whole life and I always felt like well maybe if I was just this type of daughter, you know, even though but it might have been your father, that that's the lies that the enemy that's does, the and you get caught in these toxic relationships. And so, listen, so the T is for take action, and so taking yeah. action is being able to renew your mind daily yeah. with the Word of God because it's the only. The word of God is the only thing that's going to keep yep, you absolutely. at the end of the day because you're literally bombarded with thoughts of defeat, that's of right. doubt, second guessing yourself, mm -hmm. all these kind of things. And so if you don't know, if you don't have a foundation in the word of God, that's not a one day a mm -hmm. week or every day is a part of your lifestyle. It is your daily bread. Mm -hmm. It's what you breathe, eat and drink. You ain't going to make it out here. Yeah. You just ain't. Because life is not yeah, easy. Absolutely. It's hard. And you're dealing with spirits and people and all this kind of stuff. And so I have to release daily. Absolutely. Like, literally, I delete people. <laughs> I delete I people every day. Like, as soon as somebody say something or do something, I delete the conversation. Mm -hmm. I delete their number. Me too. Because you hold on to it every day. And I mean, uses wanna, it. Yes, right, he exactly. does. Yes, then, he does. Because what I, what, what I was noticing that, Every time I would see a message mm -hmm. in my news mm -hmm. feed, and I'm not even talking about social media, mm -hmm. I'm just talking about on my phone. Mm -hmm. You were living it. An emotion yeah. would be. Emo yes, it was. So, yeah. I, so when it was something that wasn't unpleasant, I just delete the yeah, conversation. That's right. Or just delete the number. Because the enemy number. will have it and replaying it, right, in replaying, your mind. I'm like, yeah. I can't have this. Re yeah. I, got to, I got to release this. Yep. And then by the time they resurface, I, it's a new day. Yeah. Because, you know, the Bible tells the us to be angry, but do not sin. But do not sin. And that was the part I had to get because you start putting your mouth on people. This person, that y'all, this, and you, you know, you're, the enemy uses life and death is in the tongue. Yes. And so he incites our emotions. Like yes. you said, he and you and you and I remember the Lord had me preach about that with David, where he incited him to do that. And all those people die. Right. And so it might not be you, but you might have the people around you spiritually in a place like dying all because all of the negativity that you're spewing out of them. Now your children is growing exactly. up. Exactly. And then the negative to become so that's that's a that's a very important to be careful because the enemy will use whoever he can and he will use yes. you to yes. hurt the very people that hurt you and to put your mouth on them because they Absolutely. still have a soul at the end of the day so then you talk about healing um healing is a journey and it sounds as though you've gotten to a place where it, you've learned that it's a continual journey it's a continual yeah. journey because every day you can be hurt yeah by something somebody mm -hmm. says or does and so also here's the thing with healing I had to learn how to not walk in the spirit of offense. Yeah, yeah. I had to get tough skin and just realize hurt people hurt people. Mm -hmm. And when you saying something out your mouth, I ain't do it. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to take offense to that. Mm -hmm. I ain't a part of the problem. I'm trying to be the solution. Mm -hmm. But if I can't, it's okay. That's so right. let me let you be great and let me keep on mm -hmm. being great over here. Because that's the other part about it. Like literally each in every interaction you have, mm -hmm. you can be hurt by it. Mm -hmm. You really can mm -hmm. if you are not conscious. Mm -hmm. So you have to be conscious and you have to be aware and understand that, you know what, I'm going to own this, but I forgive me. Mm -hmm. I forgive you. Mm -hmm. 
it's a new day. Yeah. It's a new day. So I practice forgiveness daily. Absolutely. I practice And you talked daily. about that in your book. You talked about healing, but you talked about the different levels of hurt and different levels yes. of the process. And I think that that was important to share because some things just, it, it hurts your little bit, a little taste, and you feel that thing. But then there's some things it's like, Lord, I'm still in this thing. Listen. And so. Like a third degree yeah, burn. Yeah, it, it really is. And, and listen, child, you got to doctor that thing up every day to pick up your cross daily and say, Lord, I'm still struggling with this. And that's something that I'm still learning and saying, Lord, I am still struggling with this and then show me the root because that was another thing like I was like how, how you still got this and then he would take me to the root but I had to ask so in there you give them some tools so what are some of the tools that you can um give some advice to the people that they're in the understanding that healing is a journey and to, um, not to rush their journey allow the Lord to do his thing and the Holy Spirit to to heal you but what's some advice and, and some tools you can give somebody journal. in journal yeah journal, that's good journal 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 that's a part of my lifestyle every single day when something is on me like in the morning the first thing i do mm -hmm. is i write it out like lord this person said mm -hmm. this or this person did that show me what i mm -hmm. did mm -hmm. in this and show me how to make it right or to forgive or, or whatever because i really just want to be free yeah like i really just want to be free because when you hold something against somebody mm -hmm. and, and there's that unforgiveness and resentment and bitterness, it just, let me let me tell you, this weekend I was I was in Maryland at a conference and I was literally a couple of feet. So this young lady Booth was like right mm -hmm. over there. I'm right here. And she did me dirty two years ago. Like like my encounter with her was so bad. She she the interaction caused me to be sick for a whole month like wow. in the hospital bronchitis just like because i was so stressed out mm -hmm. i had to get a lawyer and the whole thing and i was contemplating going to this event because i knew that i was going to see her because mm -hmm. she does this event every year and even leading up to that i had to self-talk and and, and, mm. and go through and i was able to be next to her make eye contact and not say anything to her and not be moved and not feel anything. I didn't feel rage. I wasn't angry or nothing because I had been praying to forgive her, mm -hmm. right? Regardless of whether she you says saw, anything yeah. to me or not, I, I needed to be able to be in her presence mm -hmm. and not be bothered. Right. And not feel mm -hmm. anything. So that was really important. And that's why journaling, you know, is so important. So I mm -hmm. was able to do that because the people I were with, <clears throat> the people that I was with know her okay. and associate with her. Okay. And it was just funny because one person is standing right next to me and she was like, oh, hey, such and such, come here for a second. And, uh, and I was still having a conversation with another person. It was just like, it was like we were two, mm. two people who never had any interaction wow. with each other. But you know what, on my ride home to Philly, I said, you know what, next year when I go, I'm gonna make sure I say hello to her, mm -hmm. whether she respond or not. Because now I'm over it. Now I'm completely mm -hmm. over it, now that I had that encounter. I know that's the Lord make you tell me a story on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> That's all, I mean, I, yeah, I it, really it was, went through a was, lot of stuff with a lot of friends and, and a separation from a church. And I recently saw a couple of those people and I was just like, I didn't speak. And then when I went home, I was like, now, Lord, what if I would have spoken? What would they have done? I kind of I felt it when that's why I'm laughing when you were telling me that. But I know that he'll give me another opportunity because he dealt with me when I went home. So I appreciate you sharing that because God does all things well with, you know, with your obedience and sharing. Because I'm in that place where it's like you two. You know, you find out this and that person is coming behind your back. And so anger and bitterness, it makes you sick. Mine, you know, um, mine was with bloating. Like the Lord was saying, like you're struggling here and you're, it, because you're dealing with all of that stuff build up and you mm -hmm. haven't released it. Mm -hmm. And so now he's putting me in positions where I'm running into these random. Somebody left a, a, something on a picture of mine that I hadn't talked to in a while and really was a friend of mine and hurt my feelings. And I love them still to this day. But then he put it up there and I was and I spoke to it. Now, a year ago, I wouldn't have said nothing. But God is doing this. Yeah. He's putting Putting them in places to make me release it. Yeah. So I'm going to take a quick break, and I'm actually I want to talk about the last process, which sure. is to elevate. So we're going to take a quick break. Okay. Awesome. And thank you guys so much for keeping it locked the entire time here. We are still here with Oviama Martin, and she has this amazing book here that she is holding up: "Breathe Empowered to Live a Stress." free life listen 
believe, release, embrace, acceptation, heal. And now we are talking about elevate. What's amazing and what I love how the, how the Holy Spirit gave this to you was elevation. Elevation is a process in itself. And God normally has to deal with you before he can elevate you to that next, you know, that next place in your life to be able to pretty much pull somebody else to where you are. And that's basically what this is. It's, a, it's all of those processes that get you to the place of elevation. Um, but what I thought was also amazing, which I don't know if you noticed, it's like it's the seventh chapter in your book and seven is divine completeness. Oh, and I, I said, OK, guys, so I see what you're doing. <laughs> so I thought that was absolutely amazing. So elevate. Mm -hmm. You're in this place now. You've released all of these things. You've gone through this toxic marriage. To God be the glory that you're out. You guys are able to co-parent in such a way that your children are feeling loved. You heal from not believing in yourself. What advice would you give to yourself, the Obiyama, not even in the marriage, but the Obiyama that didn't even love her name, that didn't even want to accept it, that had the alias, that was giving other people other names before you accepted how beautiful your name was and what it actually means. What advice would you give to yourself in that moment, seeing what God has done through you and what he's doing through this book to help other people to heal and love themselves? So I would tell my younger self, you are enough. Mm -hmm. Nothing missing, nothing broken. You don't have to try to fit in. You don't have to to try to you know fake it till you make it mm -hmm. because God created you whole he created you beautiful he yes, created he you in his image and you don't have to try to put this mask on and make people believe that you're something that you're not mm -hmm. you are who God created you to be Absolutely. and 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 that's really my message to everybody because it's not even an age thing right mm -hmm. We're, we all deal with periods and mm -hmm. season mm -hmm. of am I beautiful mm -hmm. you know uh am I you, just the whole shape and, the, and the, you know, I was last week in Delaware um, speaking to a um, to a ministry, Daughters of Esther, and I was mm -hmm. saying how, you know, the whole time I was married, because my husband was very um, jealous and insecure, I never, I always wore baggy clothes mm. or stuff that was really long. And so when I came into this uh, new season of singleness, I was working with a gentleman who was like, you are not believable. That's what he said to me. He said, you walk around with trash bags on. I was like, what? Wow. What are you talking about? He said, you all covered up. You out here trying to empower people. Don't nobody believe you because what you're saying and the way you look yeah. does not match. Yeah. And I was wow. like, uh, okay, so what do you suggest? And he was like, first of all, you need to stop wearing all them dark colors. Mm -hmm. You need to get some bright mm -hmm. colors. Like, yes, yeah, And right. then you need to show some skin, mm -hmm. right? So I was like, all right, I, I'm a woman of integrity, so uh, I don't know about the show and skin. Maybe mm. I can take the skirt up to the knee, uh -huh, uh -huh. you know, a little bit or whatever, because I was really yeah. insecure, wow. right? Because I was skinny and now I'm thick. Like I was 125 when I got married and I'm like 180 now. And I'm like, I'm thick. So I didn't realize. Right that I had a figure though. So I changed my, yeah, yeah you no, do. for real. You so do. I changed my, I changed the way I was dressing and everybody was like, girl, you've been hot in that all mm -hmm. these years. I was like, hot, what? But see, that's it. God gives us this moment. And I'm glad that he was that bold to share with you because you're a beautiful woman. And, but and I didn't see yeah, you didn't see it. I didn't and see even, myself as being beautiful. Yeah, that's my husband right. wouldn't even see yeah. He never told me I was beautiful. Wow. He never told me I was beautiful. He never, he didn't compliment me. He didn't, like, if I got dressed, whatever, he never said, oh, that looks nice on you or anything like that. So, and, and then he was so fine with me being natural so it was mm. i never had to deal with the makeup because he was okay. he was a hundred percent fine he didn't like makeup anyway. okay whenever i would try to put whether it was lip gloss or eyeliner he'd be like you look like a clown take that off your face really well and you know and, and it's <laughs> but that stuck with you where you didn't even want like you it could did. you didn't even want to try anything at all i didn't all. want to try anything i would wow. just i would just fit in where i where mm -hmm. i fit in you know and so I had to embrace all yeah. of that. And then I had to, the, so it was like, okay, I'm actually cute. <laughs> <laughs> but I got to still have integrity. Though. Yeah, that's right. Right. Because sometimes we bust out out of that shell and we bust out for and real. Because that was what I went real. through. I bust and out so, for real. And yeah. I, girl, I was putting on stuff and the people was like, men and women, like, all them hips, really? All that booty? And I was like, what? Girl, I was in denial. I was like, what? What booty? What y'all talking yeah. about? I never saw myself. Wow. So. Well, to God be the glory that you see. I mean, that picture right there is full of color. 
It ain't no dull cause. It's a beautiful picture and it just radiates who you are. So to God be the glory that you allowed him to heal you and that you're not afraid to allow people to hear what you've gone through so that they won't have to, not necessarily they won't go through the same thing, but they won't have to stay in it. And it's, and it's a choice. And I won't say they won't, but they can choose not to because that was how this show started where I felt like nobody was telling me how to come out. I would go to church and y'all would give me, and, and God, and they would give me all that, and I would clap, but I would go home and I would still be in that box. Mm -hmm. And then when I did have that encounter with Jesus, I was scared, so I lived in a box again in this religious box. I can't be around people that don't know Jesus. And that's another box that we put ourselves in because I was like, I didn't want, you know, you take on this religious mindset, I don't want God to think that I don't love him. Right. All the lies that they tell you if you do All this, just like you said, and so you had to learn to balance. So I'm grateful for your story. So where would people be able to find you if they want to see, she comes out, she speaks y'all, you can purchase this, yes. but where would they be able to find so, you? So you guys can find me on all things social media, Obiama Martin, mm -hmm. O-B-I-O-M-A. My website is obiamamartin.com. Mm -hmm. And so I am on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. I'm not on Snapchat. Me either. Uh, but that's where you can, I, I pretty much live on Facebook and, and Instagram. Um, but all things are on my website, mm -hmm. www.obiamamartin.com, and you can purchase the book from there. And also you can book me to speak at your church, at your women's mm -hmm. group, at your corporate business, because there's a business spin the brief too, because I've been yeah. an entrepreneur for, for almost years. 20 yeah. years. And so she there does was a some great job. Yeah. I had to, like on a corporate level, people in a nonprofit industry, like really trying to come for me, like wow. literally, going to my contractor saying don't do business with her so i don't even talk about half the like I I, really you can tell through. i'm like she ain't, I, I know you and talking to you i know how deep I you go i was like yeah some real and stuff yes. so not only did i had to learn how to breathe coming out of my marriage but mm. i had to learn how to breathe coming out of my marriage going from being you know one with someone in marriage one with someone in business mm -hmm. and now being totally on wow, my so own he separated in business. you completely that's deep and and so then i mean that in itself is a lot that's a lot of transitioning but to god lot. be the glory that she's sharing the story today god just simply wants you to breathe he breathed life into you yes. and he wants you to I, you know, they say living your best life is like going on part, but he simply wants you to live. It says who the sun sets free is free indeed. Free and indeed. he truly wants you to live free. And we had to learn what free me and we had to learn how to stay free because, you know, you can't say a thing out and they'll come back with seven strong spirits Listen. and that's it. And that's something that I struggle with. And so the elevation is about not regressing. Yeah. Because once you get to that elevated place, mm -hmm. if you haven't built the muscle, you're not going to stay that's there. That's right. That's right. You know, because your character mm -hmm. is not going to keep you if you fake and phony. Mm -hmm. So when you get to that elevated place, you can't regress when, mm -hmm. when darts are being thrown at you. Persecution comes with the elevation. Please understand it. So yes. maybe you're in that place on today. I know that I'm in that season. It's just what it is. Um, God has me in the book of Acts. They went through a lot of persecution. Maybe you never even heard of the book of Acts. Maybe you never even heard of Jesus, but you know there's a guy that's been tugging at your heart and you hear we, his name is Jesus. He loves you. Um, he died to set you free. The Father loves you. The Holy Spirit is your best friend. It's nothing like an account with the Holy Spirit which led us all here today. So maybe you've never met him or maybe you heard of him or maybe you had a relationship and you've fallen away. If you have, you can simply just say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I invite you into my heart. I do believe that you are my Lord and Savior, but Father, I may not fully understand the things that I've gone through, but I know that you do. I ask that you would help me to walk this out with you. Teach me and guide me to be able to use my story, to be able to bring other people to you. And it's really just that simple. He wants to use you to bring glory to him. He's excited. The angels are rejoicing. If you guys want to keep up with her, please go on all of her social media and you can purchase the book. You can gift it to someone if you feel like it's not for you because you might know someone that's going to do something. You can find me on social media, Zarina Lomax 33 on Instagram, as well as Arena Lil Max on Facebook. And you can keep up with all the things God is doing there. So I thank you so much for coming today. Thank I wish you. we had more time. Just an amazing, amazing story. I definitely want to bring her back. But do you mind praying this out? Sure, okay. absolutely. Father God, we just thank you for clarity of mind. We thank you for insight and foresight, Lord thank God. You, I ask that you would bring clarity to those that are suffocating, mm -hmm. their voices suffocating, and they've lost their breath. They're, they have lost themselves and have lost their faith. And Lord God, I ask that you would open up their hearts, renew mm -hmm. their minds, and let them know that you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that they ask or think if they will let go and allow you into their 
their hearts. And Father, we ask all these things and better in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, and thank you guys so much for tuning in. We'll be back next week.